there and welcome to What's Your Story tonight here on KTN Home. Gratified that you've made the time to tune in. I'm Catherine Mwangi and from the Nairobi Street Kitchen we bring you a part two of a conversation that started last week right here on What's Your Story but Manspective. So what are the perspectives from the male panel that we had, we continue with them, on different aspects of life revolving especially around relationships. So whether it's dating, whether it's marriage, whether it's what we call companionship, whatever the case may be, we explore, we enlarge this conversation tonight. So as you recall, I had given the hot seat to Danish Odongo and he will continue with this conversation. So let's go on and get us started along. Any dating that doesn't lead to marriage, honestly, is time wasting. Yes. Time wasting. And this is what I want to tell my daughter. We are privileged to have the male voices. We are calling it the man's perspective. And there's an interesting twist to this conversation that we're going to say at the end of this show. But before we continue, I'd like to hear from our beautiful audience, their personal stories, dating in the 21st century. See, see stories are bunu as you're right. I see the first hand right there. So tell us, how has it been for you? Yeah. I am 26 years old and I am married. Okay. I wish, yes, I wish I would have been married earlier. Yeah. Why? Because of one thing. Marriage is not an achievement. Have you heard that? It yeah. is not an achievement. It's not a goal. Yeah. It's a life cycle. Yeah. Number two, I would like to say this, that the reason why we are having this conversation is because a lot of ladies do not know their role in their home. For me, my personal temperament is I'm a very strong choleric. But trust me, when I get into that house, I know I have a king. Hey, hey. <laughs> I know, yes, I know I do have a king in that house. You cannot submit to something that you do not respect. Okay. Am I making points? Yeah. Girls, yeah. am I on your side or is it men? I do not know, but me, I'm talking about <laughs> from my <laughs> own experience. <laughs> Yeah. I know there's a lot of talk that all oh, ladies, you want to do this, you want to do that. Fine. A married woman should not let go of their dreams. Okay. Mm. That is one thing, mm. you know? Mm. And it is very important yeah. that, number one, you do it as a team. It's like you are in a partnership or something like that. Eh? You support me as I achieve my goals. I support you as you achieve my goals. I can assure you, if there's someone who always likes my promos for the shows I produce on Kitchen, it's my husband. Mm. Mm. I tell, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. It is very, very yeah. true. And if there's something that I also support in, yeah. I'm his biggest support, you know. Yeah. So why is it that you are then having this conversation of all oh, Siju Mara women when they enter into marriage, all oh, Siju, this is something that is not cut from our material. Which material are we talking about? Where <laughs> okay. is it from? From which country? <laughs> Let me tell you something. It is very important. As uh, uh, Daniel has said, eh, it is very important to understand what marriage is. Thank you. Na ile isu nimesikia ti kama una job unezaoa. How? Unajua hiyo ni ku risk, unataka ni risk. Juu yes, umesema nioe kama sina job. Nimeleta ule dem kwa nyumba, sasa amekuwa bibi yangu. Juu umesema tu hiyo, hiyo bibi hata atani pressure niende nitafute kazi. Yes, nimetoka nimeenda nimetafuta jobs japata, nimerudi. Si ataanza kunikelelesha tio mbona huko kama wanaume wengine. Na mimi nitakasirika na nitamsalasia kama Ju, na tutako sana, so miyo nona, ere tu uko umejipanga vizuri ndo. Uwoye. All right, all right. Me, I'm for marriage is good. That's what maybe culturally we are taught. Eh? As much as I'm, I'm a single mom, of a, she's standing, oh, she's in form one now, by the way. Claps yeah. to me. <laughs> as a single parent, yeah, yeah. I have come to learn that marriage is good. You need other than money, you need moral support. There are times life is hard, and you wish if there was someone else you could share, not even about money, but the support you get. Yeah. So I believe, to me, that's something I would want to achieve in life. It's not an achievement, but it's good for that. Eh? And then, 
And she says also that the husband support. The supportive, the supportive aspect is so, when you are out there, you can't know. Maybe from maybe one boy's perspective, eh? maybe there are things she knows. Eh? Ineza kuwa kwake haija kuwa poa, sindio? Tukika tu vituri chini ukae pale nyuma. No, hakuna mtu aliumbwa like an island. We need the other person. The other person needs us. That's okay. for me. And then, uh, if it goes, if the worst goes to the worst, if we can't date, uh, nini, we also need God. Maybe God will help us to have the emotional stability, physical, and all that. Okay. Yeah, and the spiritual right. stability. Round of applause. applause. Okay. Yeah. What is it like dating as a single mother? Sidani kona difference. There's nobody. Hakuna mtu na nikati anga jiko niko na mtoto na hakuna mtu na samanga tani katia jiko na mtoto. I don't think it has been ni that hard. To me, it's not that hard. It might be hard to some people. Kuna mtu kama I know that kuku anakijana bilasi tu mulelewa. Having being a single parent with a boy is it's harder for you maybe to get married because the man will think that the only firstborn when ya kokoi ni ya ataridi. My, so you get the nini? Yes, yes, yes. Having a man in the family, kama yeye ndio firstborn, si yeye ndo atarithi. Kuna kitu tunachanganisha anga wa responsibility. One of one of you atuambie difference between a, a boyfriend responsibility zake na a husband the same the same way a girlfriend uh, responsibility zake na wife. Okay. Yeah. We start here then we go uh, Silas responsibility Girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, what's happening is that um, we are in the middle of a transition yeah. uh, whereby traditionally men always provided. And women are still stuck in that phase. Like, if I go out today and ask a woman out, she still expects me to play that role. So maybe the Gen Z and the future generations, there'll come a time where now you can have like shared responsibilities. When you go on a date, any, any of you can pay. You can even share bills in the house, you know. So when you're the boyfriend, you still have, because you see, provision is actually about competence. Because a woman wants to see that, can this man take care of me and the baby? So that is like the notion that informs that expectation from women. You know, so that's why, like, uh, even when you're a boyfriend, you still have to do uh, more of the work, and w which is a good thing to me. But now, I always tell men that, now, you know, you have to spend money mm. on the right woman. Okay. But, you know, men get frustrated whereby you're just spending money on, because uh, some women are just uh, funny. They just use your money and Go. they walk away. Yeah. I did a story about women eating fair, and then I wrote on Facebook and... Women were confessing, men just foolishly sent. Then money at 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 the tissue sham to me, you know. So now you have like to be very, uh, very selective how you spend your money, mm. and you have to spend it in a responsible way. Yeah. And uh, because women, women don't even want to be taken. Maybe you peleke inta kona mani, you know. Uh, it's not the money that is the factor. It's how you use that money. On her. Back to you, uh, Juma. There's a question there about uh, money, and 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 he's saying that you're saying that you yeah. marry without money, yes. then stress yes. comes. How do you manage that? Okay. First, let me just say that uh, human beings are relational beings. Yeah. We were created to relate to one another, mm. so uh, that's why relationships are important. Before you get married, because you two need to advise each other. You know, to advise each other for a job. You know, could give each other emotional support, you know, and um, experience that support, friendship. Eh? You know, before and now you go into Ilengini a conja goal. If you can preserve that for marriage, that's good for you. And if you feel the need to, to go, then get married. Yes. You realize, maybe you can talk to your, maybe your uncle or your dad or your grandfather. When they, when they go married, they probably didn't have jobs. Maybe they were not working. And most of them in the village, they don't, people are getting married in the village, they're not even, uh, you know, they're not married. And they, get, they don't have jobs, but they're married. They, they, you know, they're getting married. And they're having kids. And some are having more kids than, uh, than kids in town, right? Yeah. Yeah, so my, the reason I'm saying this is that um, you build each other so that by the time you are, um, you are successful, I don't want to say, I want to to yeah. grow together, ata hii mali tukonayo, tumeleta together. Rather than uh, waiting, wewe ukwe na wako, you know, you become rich, 
I love Sister Kuje. So that's the kind of uh, thing that I, I mean. And I'm advising, I'm always telling um, the generation today, marriage doesn't have to be a burden. It doesn't have to be a burden. You know, we can uh, redefine it. You know, we redefine it, we grow together. There's a question I want to put in the spotlight that there's sort of like um, an allergy to mention submission. This is what I feel around conversations like that. I don't think provision is conditional. I don't think submission should be conditional. I don't think um, relationships should be, if you don't do, I will do. If you do, I will do. I think when we start doing that, we have a problem. Mm. And then we end up into a scenario where it's now loggerheads, people are fighting, and you don't move forward. Mm. Um, do I believe that, yes, a relationship should have a strong male figure? Yes. Do I believe a relationship should have a strong female figure? Yes. I think people have to learn. I like what she was saying, and even uh, she had mentioned at one point, the blend is what matters. Mm. It's about sitting down and saying, where are we going? Somebody was talking about a vision. Yeah. I'm a strong believer that any man, before you get married, you should have a vision. Yeah. He knows. I have an eight-page vision written down yeah. about what my role is supposed to be, what my partner's role is supposed to be, and what children's roles are supposed to be. When you come into this family, what are you coming to do? Mm. Give that vision and then say, this is where we are going to. Yeah. And then this vision is broken down even in, in terms of finances. This is how, as a family, we are supposed to go. This is where we are supposed to get to. And I think that's important even in a, home, in a homestead, that every man should provide that leadership to be mm. able to say, this is where we are going. A, a, how, a home where the man doesn't have a vision, you'll have confusion. Mm. There will be utter, it's just disarray. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows where we are going to. Nobody knows where we are coming. Yeah. Money comes in. We don't know where we are putting it, where it's supposed to come to. And so for me, then, everyone submits to something. Let me, from my perspective, I'm a Christian. Mm. So I believe as a man, it is my duty to submit to God. Mm. With, with or regardless. Yeah. 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 It is my duty to submit to God, and I have to. Yeah. Whether or not I have a partner who is submitting to me, I'm submitting to God. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel that in turn works all the way down. Yeah. Even with the children, even with a partner that you know, whether or not one is doing, do your part. I believe yeah. your part, there's something about a man who submits to God. Yeah. There's something about a woman who is able to recognize this is my king, as she had said. Yeah. And um, there's something, there's a way, I don't, something about a feminine, there's something about the feminism of a woman that boils down a man's heart. Yeah. You can <laughs> be like tough that. and you're ready to fight. <laughs> yeah, like that. But her. <laughs> There's just something in when she comes, yeah. like, I usually give the example of Ugandan babes. Yeah, yeah. You walk in the house and she comes, several. she's on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something, <laughs> something. <laughs> Silas, Silas, you're a rejoinder. <laughs> Silas, you're a rejoinder. Yeah, so, um, you know, something we lost along the way yeah. is uh, understanding the humanity of each other. Okay. Um, like you can look at a woman and see that this is a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Like a woman can look at you and see this man, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it's a Kenyan thing. I see, I see it in Kenya, America, and South Africa, you know, yeah. where by we've lost that art of seeing the humanity in each other. Mm. And, uh, you know, for marriage, when you understand the overall role, like, um, of marriage, you know, like raising children together, having a family, that is something that also we've lost. Like people don't understand the bigger picture mm. of marriage, you know. Mm. And um, if we can get to that point, then uh, we can now live within our expectations, within our means, you know, and make it work. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, as she was saying, we live in a, an economic system mm. that is extremely very harsh on marriage. Mm. And, uh, but still, if the two of you do it together, you are likely to succeed. Even children who come from a family setup that has a mother and a father, uh, they tend to have a bigger break in life, generally, than children who come from single parents homes. Uh, if we are to follow like the American model, children who come from single parent homes, like go to jail, like 70%, uh, children who have like um, juvenile delinquents, you know, all that. So there's a place for a man in a marriage, there's a place for a woman. Uh, if you can get to a point where we can discover that, men to step up um, uh, and do their job, you know, and that's something that we've been calling on men, like um, whether you're separated from your wife or do something for your children, you know, child step support. up because uh, not, just, not, not just child support, be there for your children, you know. Mm -hmm. Separation doesn't mean like... Uh, you know, you abandon the child and all that, you know. Because uh, 
when you deny the child uh, your, your existence, you know, like in their lives, you are doing a great disservice, not, that, not, not just to the child, but to the world. Mm -hmm. So if you can get to a point where we can see that and understand, like, uh, if, you've, if you've brought forth a child, like, you have to do, go all the way until they turn up as responsible, mm -hmm. responsible adults. Because there's something I know I'll talk about, and women sometimes want to kill me, but it's there. Um, there are women who marry men as a, as a ladder. It's just a stepping stone. Uh, maybe she's in a bad place economically, she's 26, and a job, and, a nini, and then the, she meets a stable man, and five years down the line, she's like, ah, I can do better than this. She's now stable, she has a man, and then she just leaves. That has happened, and it happens daily, and there's nothing wrong. Uh, it's wrong uh, when you think about it, but now for a man, now you have to factor in all those, all those things. All right, Catherine? Yeah, um, yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love that there's... Um, divergent perspectives mm -hmm. from these men. Yeah. And I really love also that it's the men talking yeah. and the women on this side, yeah. at least the ones <laughs> meant to be on the panel side. Yeah. Um, but there's a point that one boy said that I feel has gotten lost in the conversation and mm. she talked about, um, it doesn't have to necessarily end in marriage. Mm. The companionship factor. Mm. And I give the example of Oprah Winfrey. Um, I say, one of the reasons she's super successful mm. is because of Stedman. And she's talked in her show about why she doesn't believe in, you know, putting her signature on this marriage certificate. It's we have agreed we are going to be together for the rest of our lives or for as long as we can oh, yeah. and we will. And see, they've been together 30 years. So for me, when I see a billionaire woman like that, and she long accepted that, you know, kids are not her thing, that's why she supports kids. Mm. So yes, she's received flack yeah. for um, going against the societal norms of marriage, yeah. and there's reasons why she can't get kids. But we have seen through her a successful template yeah. of companionship. Mm. So I wouldn't want us to also not that I'm not a believer in marriage. Like they've all said, it's a beautiful thing. Mm. I think it's excellent, especially if it's with the right person. Yeah. I am pro-marriage, yeah, okay? I'm true. pro strong, wholesome relationships, yes. Yeah, yeah. But there are people also who have had it real good without signing it. So. And that's because between the two of them, they agreed. Mm. Maybe you're not ready to sign, but I am. So let's, 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 let's. Okay. Maybe I'm ide idealistic, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's just what I think. Okay. Makofi, that's a fantastic feedback. Oh, boy. I love the fact that different, different um, points have come up, really. And I think particularly on the issue of marriage, companionship, love, I find it that now, and I speak about now as an older woman, as an older girl, lady, who's also a single mother, mm -hmm. My dating experience right now is better than it was when I, I didn't have a child, when I was younger, when I was whatever. When people would typically say that you're a better fruit, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're no. Mm. I am, I, 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 why? Because I have more information and I would like to agree, I think, with, with Silas on that mm. part that he said, delay marriage, please. Don't delay it forever. If you find somebody that you are equally yoked with mm. and you feel like this is your time and you're an adult, mm. Nisawa, you, you have our blessings. Mm. Go. In fact, mm. call us. I love going to weddings mm. and I, I dress up well for weddings, by the way, because me, I love love. <laughs> Be happy. It's good for you. Okay. So anyway, but personally, having, having <laughs> grown now, I understand my power more. I understand my body more. I understand my decisions more and I could stand on them than when I was possibly 18, 15, 16. Yeah. That time I was like, ah, CJ, what? I want to impress everybody. No. Right now, and let me tell you, the one thing that I always lead with when I am even talking to a man or uh, possibly getting to know a could-be suitor is I, I am a mother. Like, it comes up and it mm. is there. It stays in my mouth. Mm. Because, one, my child is not even a problem. 
why I have been, uh, and, and I think this is a privilege mm. and I, I, I like to say that I'm a privileged person because mm. not lots of single mothers could say this. I'm privileged because my parents empowered me in that way mm. or they taught me that there is no expiration date mm. for yourself because you got a child or things went this way. And then we forget that also. For a person to become a single parent, it could go in. It could be you went separately with the mother of your mm. child or the father of your child or your partner died. Mm. But either way, you're the ultimate parent and people will look at you. If You know the problem, and I keep saying that the, the problem with human beings and, and, and especially in this society is not that we have a problem between men and women. Yeah. It's because we do not consolidate our struggle. We do not realize that mm. the bigger problem is actually a system that has taught us or a society that has taught us uh, look at each other as escape ways, like this one, shuttle, you're my property now, or you, now you're my root outside of poverty, or you, you're the one who is going to, you know, we look at each other as transactional things, like we look at each other, we, the, we view each other with the lenses of a capitalist world. And do you know the reason why I always hold men to a, big, to a higher standard? than women. Not ultimately because, and as I said, that men were born evil or whatever, or all these other things that might come up. It is because who are the sole custodians of the power? The power dynamics are very, very, very serious in a capitalist world because it is set up, capitalism being the base, and then you will have a patriarchy. Who thrives in a patriarchy? It will be a white man then maybe Asian men, and then there will be black men. Evo, 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 white women, nini, nini. ultimately you will find black women who... Co powers, the power lies with the people who have money. Let us not forget that. And also in a capitalist system, there are people who are paid more. There are people who are taken seriously more. There are people whose voices are valued more. And these kinds of things are, are, are also viewed with a gender lens, with a whatever lens. So when I hold men to a higher standard, it's not because I have a problem with men. It's because I know. Mm. If you came together with me, we sat down and we consolidated our problem and we said that the confrontation we have is with the power structures, not each other. Mm. Let us fight to end this kind of domination mm. so that we are living in an equal Le we, we are at a level playing field, okay. right? Yeah. And I think what she was saying, she said a very good point, I think, in marriage. And I think when it comes to marriage, and, uh, and, and I think he, he also addressed that, like, these things should not be transactional, like, you provide, I am, I am a submission, it comes in, 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 in. I think there is a need for us to realize that in every, each and every relationship, and it does not have to be a love relationship, that there should be mutual love and respect. Because when you love people, when you respect them, then it will be very easy for you to even do conflict resolution easily. Mm. Without fighting without thinking that now this is one upping each other or I don't know you Silas you are the bad one or I don't know no and and that's why I think I said that I am not in the business of doing gender wars because my problem is not with gender wars my problem is with a system mm -hmm. that has made things the way they are mm -hmm. and that is why I thank again you guys for inviting us here mm -hmm. to have this conversation yeah. and I think just to wrap it up maybe what I would finish with saying is that if your parents die somebody will step up into that position and love you and take care of you. So let us reimagine families. Let us reimagine our relationships with each other. Let us reimagine community because we cannot afford to just look at everything with that lens of nuclear. Me and my husband are alone. No. In fact, you and your husband alone cannot do anything. Get sick today and you will realize Mm. In this country where atakuna insurance mzuri or you will be going here and what, no, you will know that you will need community. So we'll have to reimagine even families. Mm. This is why my thing again, as I wrap it up, my problem is with a system. structure. Yeah. It is with a system, not men and women. Okay. Thank you. Makofi Tafadalini. And we are going to come back in a few. Let's take some commercial break. What's, what's your story? is coming back right in a few minutes' time. So I think we just chill out and then come back. I need us to understand why men take um, rejection quite personally and why men um, heartbreaks, we, 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 we cry longer. I, I'd like to understand this. And finally, I want to know then uh, what's the audience opinion about this conversation has been. We'll be right back in a few more minutes. My name is Danny Shodongo. Thank you so much. Makofi for the lady. 
Why do we react differently when a lady says no? program it's what's your story with me Catherine Mwangi today having assigned the hot seat to my friend Danish Odongo because the conversation revolves around perspectives men have on relationships so let's go back to the set and join the conversation Welcome back to Watch Your Story. I'm your host for today. My name is Danny Shodongo, and we have had a fantastic conversation about dating in the 21st century. And this last part of this show, we want to find out why men sometimes take rejection so personally. We've discussed this quite a bit, um, you know, uh, men and rejections. And we've had many stories of this young man who walked with an axe to Eldoret because the woman said no. We've seen many violent cases that happened just because a woman said no. Is it that we are now, we have men who have like a bit more sensitive and weaker egos? What's happening? First of all, I feel it's a, it's a problem of lack of avenues to express yourself. Mm. So sometimes it sounds um, redundant to keep saying this, mm. but when you're raising boys, what you know, one common thing many parents do that we don't realize is suppressing emotions. Mm. When your parent hit you, what did they tell you to do? When you start crying, shh, shh, mm. nyamaza. Yeah. Mm. So without realizing you're programming a child yeah. not to be able to express their emotion. Because yeah. you've hurt me. Yeah. I'm cr I'm, my crying is a response to what you've done. Yeah. So you have this young boy who now then grows up without having an avenue of how to express his emotions. Mm. So when someone does something to him, he doesn't know what to do. These emotions, he do you don't know how to handle these things that you're feeling. Mm. Because you've never been taught how to do the how to how to manage those feelings not to excuse murder mm, this, the, mm. i think that's important to yeah. say it's not to excuse the actions of murder but i'm just putting it in the to try and get a sort of perspective yeah. of what's going on in somebody's mind and also there's the other thing of giving a child too much mm. oh i want this you have everything you want you have so the, we're talking about two extremes yeah. you're constantly getting everything you want and every every time you ask for it you're it's given yeah. so when somebody says no you're like how can you tell me no mm. how and then you don't know how to handle that you don't know how to handle no, and this other one doesn't know how to, has never heard yes. Yeah. So you have these two extremes that then come, then you have somebody who doesn't know how to handle the emotions, and they, they act out in whichever ways that they do. Once again, it's not excusing murder, not excusing the actions that somebody takes. It's just trying to, I guess what I'm trying to do is to understand why somebody is there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an issue of we have weaker men or stronger men. I think it's just an issue of not knowing how to handle emotions. Mm -hmm. We don't talk. When we talk, some, t some men, when they talk, you are told, no, you, that doesn't matter. Or you, are, you only talk about certain things. Once mm -hmm. again, not excusing murder, we, just we you. trying to have a, an, an open conversation, I guess, around this, the issues. But Chito, just a rejoinder, and any of you can join in on this question. Why do we react differently when a lady says no than when another man says no? I think it's because when another man says no, you know you can face resistance. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Yeah. I think for, for within a woman, you know you are facing resistance. But I think because when uh, we talk about the women in terms of strength, and I talk about physical strength, I'm not talking about emotional, I'm talking about physical strength. For that certain, certain mindset, you're looking like, ah, I can overpower this one. But you see, if Silas and I are going at each other, we'll, there'll be some going. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just a basic way. I'm not going, trying to get deep into it. That's just a basic it's just a basic thought. So the reason I've asked you that question, because we I often know. react a bit more violently when women say no mm. than when other man says, like when you're denied a job or promotion, you sort of know how to coil your tail and go back home. But when it's a woman, then you feel like you can... But I think it yeah. also still depends, because there are some men who still... Re that's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's, not, a, it's not subjective yeah. to this, this person and this person. I think it's based on the individual. Because mm. there are also men in office. I've seen this happen in an office where somebody has been rejected by another man, a fellow man, and the guy has been raised. Yeah. I've seen it happen not once, not twice, not three times. So I think it's not, it's not a subjective conversation. It's depending on okay. the person's emotive yeah. and the emotional intelligence and growth. 
Okay. Juma, I've had a lot of issues. People saying, oh, you know, nowadays you men are saying you're depressed, you're having anxiety, you want to die by suicide. In our time, all these things you were complaining about, we went through many of those things, but we survived. Mm. Do you think that the new generation of men are weaker? Majority of men usually um, invest a lot of their, not resources, but also their emotions. Yeah. Uh, when a man decides to marry a woman, uh, usually he's, uh, he's in it, he's mm -hmm. looking at the end, it, it means. And um, uh, w when there's a disruption, of course there's disappointment. Mm -hmm. And like every other human being, uh, men will always want to uh, not to be seen as a loser. No, no, not to have lost, uh, but un unfortunately, life is is like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to accept to win. Sometimes you ac accept to, to 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 lose. Okay. And um, and I know sometimes, especially when you lose a, a woman to another man, it's usually sad. It's usually very very sad, especially when you know that um, she she's there. Maybe she's the mother of your baby, but she's with another man. So we always feel that entitlement. Um, and and we, we, we feel kind of jealous, but this is mostly an African setup. But um, in, in Europe and other countries, they have overcome those things. Okay. Uh, they can even, I've seen uh, situations whereby mm. um, uh, uh, an ex, uh, ex husband, they even meet together, mm. uh, the, the man comes to visit the kids, and they even go out together, and they, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing right. Uh, sinister. All right. Silas. Um... There's a question of the changing dynamic of masculinity right now. And there are all these masculinity podcasts called the Red Pill, the Manosphere, the Tatis, and the Andrew Tate and stuff. Do you think that is affecting how men are dating and perhaps they're picking a lot of socialization from these spaces that are sometimes not culturally relevant to our context here? Or even locally here we have people in that space. You know, we are all product of the environment. Yeah. And uh, if you look at the young men today, they have been born into a relatively very stable country. We've had our good moments economically and all that. And uh, we lost our culture. You know, like when you were young, we used to grow together with your cousins, you know? You are initiated together, and you learn a lot of stuff about being a boy, being a man from other men. Mm. But now we have smaller families. Uh, we are sending kids to boarding schools uh, from primary school, from class four. So we don't have that culture. You know, you're the, the supposed to socialize yourself if you're born into a certain community, you know, understand its culture. We've lost that. Eh? And uh, the effect now, people are turning up as adults and uh, they don't know how to be adults. Mm -hmm. As you said, uh, now you get that men, uh, we are entitled, like, and this is a bad thing, like we're entitled to the female body, like you want to own it, you want mm. to possess it. Mm. And now we based a generation of women who want to, the, their bodies, their agents, like they want to own their body. So mm. for men who fail to learn this fact that you cannot be entitled, those are the ones who have a problem. Um, I lay with like, okay, I've taken you out, but you don't want to go home with me. Uh, they feel bad. And in the manosphere, we have two things we call the red pill and the blue pill. Mm. Um, men, like now, this, I don't like using the word weak men. Um, <laughs> in the manosphere, we call it like the blue pill philosophy, where you're entitled. Um, women approach things a little bit more realistically. They don't go about it like they don't idealize. You know, they know they're human. They are, mm. You know, so the, for us men now, we look at too many. We, we idealize them so. When she busts that bubble, mm. so some men don't know how to, to handle yeah, that. Yeah. But it's basically that kind of entitlement. Mm. Uh, the reason why we have the manosphere is because we don't have the uncles. Like the most important conversation of my life, I had it with my uncle when I was 35, 10 years too late. Mm. So, what the manosphere is doing, the manosphere is now acting like um, that uncle. But now, unfortunately, some of the gospel in it. Um, is very inconsistent with our values. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is trying to sort of like make men uh, like robots, mm -hmm. and it's not teaching men how to relate to women uh, well. Mm -hmm. And that's why some aspects of it now are breeding that kind of like misogyny people are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it, like in America, there's a lot of violence, like really, really. It's like a whole thing they call like the incel culture. Mm -hmm. In Africa, what you'll consider incels, they are not necessarily 
like very violent, save for yeah. the few online who spew that kind of uh, hatred and all that. But um, it's all about the environment mm -hmm. that uh, we have grown in and mm -hmm. that changing world. And as I said, we are in that transition yeah. where women now own themselves. They, they can take control of their destiny. And some men are struggling with that fact mm -hmm. and that they don't know how to go about it. And um, I believe there's a positive side of like, uh, the manosphere. Uh, men are learning a lot of things, um, but also there are bad elements like mm -hmm. uh, in it. Okay. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fantastic show. But before that, I'd like to take some final comments from my panelists. We're beginning with Domboy. Just your final wrap-up points. Yeah. I think myself and Silas will keep having this back and forth of, mm. please, get married only if you're ready to get married. Mm. It is not an emergency. Mm. It's not an emergency. You get married when you're ready to get married. Grow, make your money, you know, understand things. Sit with people. Two. Yeah. Have a community, yeah. okay? Yeah. Can we build communities? Like when I sit, when I get out there, I know I have now, I have built a community, or I'm starting to build a community with, what, 20 of you, 30 of you, because we've sat down and we've started a conversation. I, I feel like we could always pull each other outside and say that, okay, that point that you are saying and go back and forth, this is how we build communities because without communities, I do not think there is anything we are going to do. Like this conversation would easily just end here. And then tomorrow we'll sit down and have another war of mm. men are saying, women are saying. But until we build communities and we realize that our issue really mm. is our system. And this is why I'm saying that, yeah, extractionist, patriarchy, I don't know, capitalism. It's a lot of political things that we can't go into right now, okay. right? But it was really nice being mm. here. Let me wrap it up. I could speak for the whole day, but we don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah really nice. You guys were such good people. And thank you for even bringing my brain back to work. Like, oh my God, I have not spoken about these things in a long time. We need to have these conversations more. Yeah. yeah. All right, a round of my coffee. Chito. <laughs> um, my final remarks, I think because when you sit in a panel like this, everybody has their own thoughts and their own ideas. Mm. And then we tend later on to get into a your truth, my truth. Mm. I think for me, there is the truth. Yeah. And I think whatever conversations we have, at whichever level we have them, there is the truth. Mm. We can't deny what the truth is in whichever forms we are in, mm. whether it's in relationships, whether it's in work, whether it's in manhood. There is the truth about manhood, there is the truth about relationships, and so I guess the homework to each and everybody here is to go and find out what the truth is. Mm. Because my truth, your truth still lacks. There is the truth. So find out what, that, what the truth is and live the truth. All right. The world wishes to engage with you as adult. And the reason you are here, um, uh, the reason you are not called children today is that you are adults. Start building your life because if you are still thinking that you're not an adult or that you're not old enough to, to get married, yet you're old enough to, have, um, to engage in uh, affairs and even uh, have sh children, uh, then you will waste a lot of time. So get that out of the way now and then start getting that job doing that business and build yourself so that we can grow this economy. Um, that is my advice, and that is going to be my advice, you know, and uh, I believe that uh, the, basic, um, uh, the basic unit of the society is the family. And to quote from President uh, Kenyatta, um, one day in his speech, he said that um, um, anything that threatens the family, uh, you know, um, is a threat to the survival of the nation. Mm. And um, um, today you are young, but 50 years, let me say 60 years from today, I will not be here, but you guys will be here, and uh, you guys will be saying the same, same things, the same kind of advice. You'll be giving these advices to your kids. Yeah, so mine is to really urge us, get that out of the way. Let's start thinking as adults. We always, always say that young people have been marginalized. They're not giving us jobs, CS jobs and what. Huh? But just this one, he, he, this small one, get it out of the way so that people are considering you as an adult and you, you will be successful in, in life um, moving forward. So that is my, my basic thoughts. And uh, lastly, uh, my advice to those who are getting married, don't waste a lot of money into big weddings. Mm. You get my point? Yeah. 
just do a simple wedding. Even go to the AG. My patron, Dr. Manu Chandaria, he's a billionaire. He went to the AG, got married, and in the evening, you know, mm -hmm. you know point. But young people waste a lot of billions uh, doing show-off weddings, yeah. and then they break up after one year. Mm -hmm. You know, so a percentage of the marriages that break, that break up are those show-off Instagram <laughs> weddings where you're just doing it to just show people how how wealthy you are. And then you're not investing in what matters, which yeah. is your relationship with your wife. Yeah. yeah. All right. A round of applause, my coffee. Silas? There's so much toxicity online that uh, if you follow the conversations, you'll think that out here people are not having conversations. They come out in a pigana. But uh, people get along. Mm -hmm. um, people are building communities. Mm -hmm. uh, as she says, so find a place where you can belong um, and don't follow every conversation that is online because online what to two out. Mm. You know, like sometimes I'm in a bar just drinking and I post my nonsense and I find <laughs> someone is taking me seriously and I'm like, okay, this was supposed to be a joke, you know? Yeah. So you must have that sense of discernment, you know? Yeah. Uh, yourself, you must work on yourself and know what's good for you. Mm. Um, like have your own vision, uh, know where you're headed towards because some people, and that's like one, one of the tragedies about the manosphere. Mm. Uh, sometimes you find that, I don't know, I don't, I don't like using that minions, yeah. but these people like, yeah, yeah. they have jumped on, but they don't know whether you are just tweeting or yeah. Facebooking from your own trauma, yeah, from exactly. your own uh, problems. Yeah. So be your own person, yeah. and uh, as he said, the truth is constant, yeah. and follow that part of the truth. Yeah. Not Silas' truth, uh, not his truth, not your truth. Yeah. You know, yeah. follow that. Uh, basically, if you are a believer in God, like follow what God has taught you. Okay. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, for, first of all, Catherine, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to co-host the show. That's really very kind of you. It's lowering the ladder that women keep on doing. And so for me, it's been my fantastic honor having this gentleman, and now I bring back um, the microphone to you. But my final sentiment is this, that uh, I like what he said, that there are too many people talking. And I like what she always says, that too many people talking. You decide which frequency you want to listen to. There are 101 radio stations, but the one you choose to listen to is the one that will. So you choose. There are these men who are having trauma. There are men who are having all sorts of problems. There are men who are hurt by women, and therefore they are now hating all sorts of women. The men who are left, the men who are not good enough. There are so many men who are coming from different places, and now they are pouring all that vitriol online, and there are people who are being recruited as disciples because of that. Choose your truth. My name is Danish Odongo. Back to you, Catherine. <laughs> Congratulations. Asante. You are the first co-host I'm having oh. on this program. <laughs> so well done. You've Asante. done really well. Asante. And I'm also glad that actually it's, it's been men only, mm. you know, because mm. we judge a lot as women and we make assumptions. Even men do. But I'm mm. just saying in respect to what you've done here the last, because uh, this airs over two weeks, is, is I'm hoping that we have started conversations, just like Wamboy has said, that mm. will be ongoing. And so part of why we have done this here today um, has to do with something that's very close to that. Da da when people say Danish's heart, yeah, does it yeah. make sense? Or yeah. the heart of Danish. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> the people writing books and yeah, yeah. Uh, Danish's heart. Or, yeah, so something very close to your heart is, is conversations on men. Yeah. And, and we've had conversations with you about, you know, just enlarging this mm. uh, together with uh, Chito. Yes. So... Danish has a program that he's been doing. Be what I hope your lens is on me. Okay. Because I'm talking to the audience at home. Yeah. Danish has a program he's been doing on YouTube together with Chito called Manspective. I've just had Silas has Manosphere. Yeah. Am I yeah. was hearing my own things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Manosphere. Yeah. 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 yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Manspective will be a TV program on KTN Home. Woo! And it will be exactly what you've seen happen here today. Mm. Just men having conversations about the things that matter to them. And we at home can watch, understand, send our feedback, 
Of course, our feedback channels, you know what they are, 22151, that's a free SMS line. But of course, our social media pages, on K if you just type KTN Home, it will come up. And uh, your social media pages for Cheeto, yeah. he's, he's, he's a renowned radio personality. Just look for Cheeto, Google Cheeto, yeah. you'll see him. And Danish as well. Yeah. Um, so we want to have, we want to create as a brand, platforms where it's just purely men. Mm. They come speak, they hold events for men, Maybe they invite us women to also just come and learn and ask questions mm. because people had questions here, but you know, the time didn't, didn't allow for it. Mm. So Manspective will be airing on KTN Home mm. and we just see what, what goes. Okay. We play a small part in, in giving platforms for conversations. You play your part, tuning in and giving the feedback. And when the events are called for, you show up. Mm. So us on What's Your Story, we still just become storytellers. So if you have a story uh, you'd like us to, you know, uh, catalyze uh, and share with the public, just let us know as well. I have to say goodbye. Thanking my audience, you have been wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and me, your man's perspective, Nataka Nikuje. Okay. <laughs> We're your guest number 10. Okay. <laughs> and the topic will be character development. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay.